Hi, my name's Jeff Rhodes, and this is another book on Microsoft 365 based on my book, Creating Business Applications with Microsoft 365. So you can see it here. Check it out on Amazon or somewhere else. Uh, give me some ratings. Got a few already. We can go down and look at it today. It's kind of fun. Selling pretty well, number 11 in SharePoint guides right now. So appreciate that. So today, this should be relatively quick, but I just wanted to show something I did this week and just one of my favorite use cases of using forms and Power Automate together. So in this case, you just needed something simple, but it ended up needing a, a, a ticket to the help desk and some approvals. And so it's like, well, what, yeah, I love Power Apps and approvals and so forth, but it gets a bit complicated, particularly with different permissions and routing and so forth and, and this one just didn't really justify it so uh, instead I'd set up something in about a half an hour and it works pretty well so I just thought I'd show that so let's go over to forms and just see if we can't recreate you know the basic idea here so first thing I like to just show is we want to typically want to do a group form you know the, the big difference is where the data is stored and so doesn't really matter where I put it, but this is a normal thing will be a list of all your teams. So pick a team that, you know, if the data is sensitive, that only, uh, you know, members of that team that they would have access to it and so forth. So I'll just pick a, have a, a group form here and say new group form. And I'll just call this a travel request. Really isn't what we were doing, but give you the idea. So, um, the idea is, I'll just say, uh, request sent to supervisor, and if they approve, onto the help desk. And so the employee would fill this out. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we grab who is filling it out. So we want to say, okay. It's going to grab the person, in this case in Platte Canyon, we're going to record their name. So we don't want to say anyone can respond and we want to know, and that saves us from having to basically grab the email of the person who filled it out. And uh, sometimes you get the name and stuff as well. So, uh, so what we want to do is, since we don't have their, their program office or whatever, we need that. So we'll just say office or please select your office. And in this case, we really wanted to kind of put the executive there as well, because we want to say something in the email like, you know, consult with your executive <clears throat> as well. So on this approval, so we'll just say HR, you know, Joe Cool, IT, Sally Struthers, we'll say. And maybe we'll say sales. You know, Vonda, Apple. Maybe we'll just put one more. Let's see what we'll say marketing. And we'll just say. George Collins, there we go, something like that. And we want to make that required. I tend to like drop downs rather than uh, radio buttons or whatever, just a little less space. So we'll put that in, you know, I typically put those in alphabetic order, but good enough here. And then I'll say, um, Actually, I guess I don't, I don't need this one. Let's re trash that. So what I want to know is I want to know the supervisor name. That's required as well. And I need supervisor email. Because we can't really, one difference between here and Power Apps, we can't really go to the Office 365 users and go grab people out of Active Directory and stuff. So we need them to tell us who their supervisor, who their, uh, and the email very specifically, because that's who we're going to email it to. And we don't have a good way to go find that. Uh, 
maybe you could do something in Power or Automate, but it's a lot easier just to ask for it here. And plus, at least in our organization, that information is not necessarily up to date. So even if we could grab it out of Active Directory, it may not be the right person. So, uh, and then I'm just going to put a big uh, long answer and just say, please give, whoops, what happened to it? Oh, it just went. Please give details on your travel request. So obviously in a real one, we'd have more things, but in this case, we really just wanted them to write up a big kind of justification for something. And that's pretty much it. So we can, uh, but what we're going to need to do is, so we might as well get ready now, is we're going to need the ID number of the form. So what we can do now is we can get it. Shoot, probably the easiest way is to go ahead and collect responses just to make sure we have the right one and put that in a new tab. There we go. And what we want is this number, this kind of big string and number at the end. So we're gonna want that for power automate. But this part's done. So we'll test that in a minute. So let's go back to Office and we'll go to Power Automate. And I love this functionality because we can, oh, uh, I'll, what I'll often do is save it to SharePoint and so forth too. Oh, it looks like I have some things I need re-authenticating. But in this case, I don't even really want to go to the trouble of saving it to SharePoint. All I really need is an email out of this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, create, and I'll say, or actually, I usually do it here when I do it that way, and I'll say an automated cloud flow, and I'll just say video travel request form, and you see the first one on there is when a new response is submitted, so that's kind of already set up what we want, and the thing about that I never really love, but these, these will only give you your personal form, so we can't grab the one here. You'll notice it doesn't have the travel one on there, but you got to say enter custom value and then we got to paste in that form ID. That's when I went and grabbed that. That's why I did that. So then I'm going to, and I need to always do two steps as well. So I got to do forms again and it's already there. Whoops, I don't need to fill out a thing. I'm going to say get response details and it's basically the same stuff so I got to come in be kind of nice if it kind of knew that since I already did the other form it would do it for me but that's okay and now it'll give me the response ID so easy enough and then really all I have is one more step so I need office 360 or not office sorry I need outlook 365 and we got to send an email Pick the latest one you have. All right, so what we want to do is, is email it. You might remember we have the supervisor, so we're going to send to the supervisor email. And then we'll just say our subject is going to be travel request four and I'll go ahead and notice that we don't actually get the name for whatever reason of the person but we do get the email so we'll just say for that person's email and so we can say dear supervisor please coordinate with your executive and if approved, please forward this email to help desk with your justification. So, more stuff like that, but basically the gist of it. So we'll say office slash executive. in there and I'll, you know we already have the supervisor name and stuff so I'll just say details 
that. Now, one of the th quick things, so that it's interesting to, to think about the context and who the permissions are going to be. So when I test this, and I'm going to leave it alone, but you'll see that it comes from me personally. And I don't, it's not coming from the person who filled out the form because I don't have that transferred to the, to the Power Automate flow. So everything's going to come from me. So what I did in ours is if you've got like a, an org box or something that you're authorized, you need to have a send as uh, permission, then it'll come from the org box and not from one individual so that if they reply and it's not all coming, you know, you got your whole company and it's all coming from Jeff Rhodes, that person. You notice you can also copy and so forth. So I'm not going to do it here, but that's where you go ahead and put your, your, your org box email. But it does need to be, you have to have send as rights yourself, you know, whoever is actually creating this, uh, this one here. So let's go ahead and save it. And I'm not going to test here because I really need to do it from form. So let's go ahead. I've got it here. So let's go ahead and try it. I'll say I'm part of IT and I'm going to put, I'll assume that I'm a member of the Beatles, uh, maybe a roadie or something. So I'll say Paul McCartney is my uh, one. I'm going to go ahead and put another email. This is not my Microsoft 365 email, uh, but I'll say, okay, details, and I, I like to just say line two, line three, line four, just to make sure I don't have any problems, and submit. So let's go over to Power Automate, see how long it's going to take till it sees that request. So it didn't take long, 13 seconds ago. So let's go click on it. it. Says it was successful. So we can get some like response details. So we can see that it got the right one. So that's a good sign. And also has like a submission time. So I actually could have probably, the email itself has the date and time in it. So I don't really need it, but and then I went ahead and sent in and kind of converted it to HTML. So that was kind of cool. So let me go over and check my email. See if that's come in yet. Yep. So let me bring it over. So notice that it came from my 365 account. That's what I was talking about earlier. And it said... And it's interesting that it used that. Oh, yeah, because I'm the one who filled it out, right? So I'm <laughs> getting myself confused. So I'm the one who filled it out. It happened to actually come from me, but just because I was the developer. So if I somebody else fills out the form, it's still going to come from me right here because I'm the one who did the Power Automate, unless I use the org box. It sent it to the supervisor, said it's Paul McCartney. Please coordinate, blah, 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 grab the executive and gave the details. And then notice it didn't didn't put the line two, line three, line four in there right. So that's kind of a bit of a hassle, but uh, that's all right. Let's go back and look at our automate. And you can see why, because it converted all this to um, HTML, but it didn't, this is all plain text. So I put it all in one line. So nah, not the biggest deal in this case, but, uh, that's kind of a short and quick way to, to go ahead and, and do a, a bit of a workflow without having to do the approvals uh, in Power Automate or more importantly, in this case, do different apps with permissions with a way for the, the supervisor to come in and approve it, maybe send it up to the executive. We just kind of left it just as an email process. So hope this was helpful and I look forward to you doing another video soon. Thanks.